What happened to Sega Superstars? I like Sega. That may sound like an understatement, but even after learning about the struggles they've been through over the past decades, I still like most of their games nonetheless. Nights in Your Dreams, Just Air Radio, Yakuza, Billy Hatcher, Crazy Taxi, Fantasy Star Online, Skies of Arcadia, and last but certainly not least, Sonic the Hedgehog. The sixth generation of consoles was a wild time for Sega. Before and after the Dreamcast decayed into obscurity, Sega went all out to develop and publish many games with cool gameplay, soundtracks, gimmicks, and capabilities. I may not own Dreamcast or Saturn, but I get what they're doing at the time. But it begs the question, with these many games, will there ever be a crossover? Nintendo has done something like that with the Super Smash Bros. franchise, so what about Sega? Well, they did make a crossover series. It's just that they neglected it after four games. From the past decade. I only played three out of four games of the series, and one of those games that I never tried was the very start of the whole crossovers, and that is Sega Superstars. Yeah, before Sonic Superstars, they, they did this. Basically, it's a party game where you rely on your whole body long before Microsoft even had the idea of the Kinect for the 360. From what I researched, they specifically made this game to demonstrate the capabilities of the iToy peripheral for the PS2. Moving on! Next up is Sega Superstars Tennis. I also didn't own this game, but I did remember playing the demo, and I always pick a shadow. Essentially, this game is if Sega made Mario Tennis. And playing it again after like a decade? The game is alright, but it does get a little boring. They did add many games that have altered gameplay styles referencing Puyo Pop, Virtual Cop, and Choo Choo Rocket. It's the first Sega game to have both Gilius Thunderhead and Alice Kid to officially appear in 3D. If they are a part of a crossover game, as well as Alice Kid being playable after 18 years of absence since Shinobi World. Now we're getting to what I call is the best installment of the series, and that is Sonic Sega All-Star Racing. This is peak Sega right here in my opinion. When I was little, I played this game all the time. I think what really got me with this game was the characters, and this was before I even knew about the first game in tennis. The characters made me curious as to what their games were like before appearing in this game. I always picked Billy Hatcher because something about his design just reminds me of like Sonic. And I wasn't wrong, because this is indeed a game developed and designed by Sonic Team. There is also BD Joe from Crazy Taxi, in which it makes this edition of the roster more iconic given that in CT, he drives like crazy. I mean, after all... BD Joe opening a can full of dumbass! Then there's Jackie and Akira from Project X Zone. Or I mean, Dead or Alive. Or I mean, Virtual Fighter. It kinda gets a little confusing, but I think you'll get it when doing research. I own the Xbox 360 versions of the game, and later own it on Steam. Another thing I like about the game is the racetracks. Most of the courses are based on Sonic Heroes, giving you that new feel Sonic after he switched to third party. You dance with the funky hip-hop music we're racing across Tokyo Toe from Jet Set Radio, and you also get that Saturday morning energy in Morning Land for Billy Hatcher. The Super Monkey Ball stages can go to hell. And if you're one of those people who own the Xbox version, not only do you get to play as your Xbox avatar, but you also like to play as Banjo Kazooie from Rareware! Any answer is obvious because Microsoft owns Rare. This game marks the last time Banjo Kazooie makes a playable appearance in a video game, before his inclusion in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate nine years later. In the Nintendo Wii version, you play as your Mii, and originally Mario was going to be playable in the Wii version, but was cut to avoiding confusion of this game being part of either the Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games series or Sega Superstars. As for PlayStation, their guest character is no one. But if I were to add a guest character in the PS3 version, I would say Jack and Daxter, which could be a PlayStation equivalent to Banjo Kazooie, given that they are a duo and canonically rode on cars. Yes, Jack X is canon in the Jack and Daxter series. Or since Mod Nation Racers, another GO game, came out three months after Sonic Sega Racing, they could add tag in the game as free DLC. Multiplayer in this game is also fun, and I do enjoy the mission mode to give the game more variety. 
Since I was mostly a Sega kid growing up, this game was my Mario Kart slash Crash Team Racing before I played any of those games. And then, this game happened. <laughs> Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed is the sequel to Sega All-Stars Racing, but without the Sega in the title, meaning that they're getting other characters from other series! General Winter, Willemus, Yoxcast, Football Manager? Danica Goddamn Patrick! But the good thing is we have more characters from franchises that didn't appear in the last game. Those being nice after she was in prison as the flag man, Riala after his absence for Superstar Tennis, Jean Musashi from Shinobi, Gone from Jetstar Radio, Gilius Thunderhead from Golden Axe after he was scrapped from Sega Racing, Vice from Skies of Arcadia, underrated RPG classic from the Dreamcast and GameCube, Putting from Space Channel 5, she's one of my personal favorite characters to play as in this game. <laughs> and interesting enough, Wreck It Ralph! This edition was to advertise the movie when the game came out days after it premiered in theaters. You know, kind of think of it, a part of me felt like this game is like a huge advertisement to other stuff. Not only just Rick and Ralph, but Danica's edition was because of NASCAR's strangely enough Hot Wheels. What? And as for the PC version, Yonkscast was added due to charity for people with disabilities. Another special PC character in this game are three of the nine playable classes from Team Fortress 2 as 3 and 1, consisting of Pyro, Heavy, and Spy. Add the cost of the Choo Choo's, Opa Opa, Banjo Kazooie, the Bonanza Brothers, Jackie and Akira, and Billy Hatcher. They picked Danica and Patrick for this game, but not Billy Hatcher? They made a full racetrack based on Blizzard Castle! Okay, calm down. Let me not get ahead of myself. So the gameplay. It's okay. Have you ever felt like you played a game where it has the most balanced gameplay, but when you play the sequel with the updated engine, the balance feels off? That's how I feel when playing this game. When you start the race, you get a slow start. Not even the level 3 of boosting after the race begins, it helps you speed up the slow start. Not only that, but the characters all feel so heavy weighted. Like whenever you fall from a big or a small gap, you get little reactions to do tricks, resulting in failed stunts. It goes without saying that they feel like moving anvils. The transformation gimmick? Eh. It's just gimmicks to go with the racetrack changing its pathways. And speaking of racetracks, the tracks are bad. Okay, there are some I do like, such as Ocean View, reminding you much of Sonic with the Sonic CD music playing. Seasonal Strikes give you the feeling of being in the Bakumatsu a period of Japan. You like a hero from the skies when racing through Rogue's Landing, and Dream Valley gets you emotional, as you want a Sega to care about nice more often. Summer Studios is garbage, Temple Trouble is generic, Graffiti City is painful, Sanctuary Falls put me to sleep, Graveyard Gig is forgettable, Burning Dust can go burn to ash, I forgot Emerald Bay is even a racetrack in this game. <sighs> Most of the race tracks in this game are so many yogurt that I almost have pity for them. And it saddens me that they appeared this way. The roster, specifically the PC version, is incredibly cryptic, although it does feature some good characters, as well as another bonus character named Ages. The music? I mean, it's okay. It's nothing more than dubstep versions of the soundtrack from any other franchises featured in this. And if you were to play Team Fortress, they made their all-star theme even more funkier. Take a listen. I know y'all are thinking that I'm saying that this game is bad, but in my opinion, it's not bad. It's just okay. Simple additional decision of adding or removing things on what made the original All-Stars racing game so beloved made this game a mixed result. At the time in 2012 and 2013, pretty much most Sega fans had no idea who Danica Patrick is. They know Ralph, Ryo, Hazuki, and Team Fortress but never played or even heard of Company of Heroes or Football Manager. They might have a Dreamcast, GameCube, or a PS2 with Skies of Arcadia and Space Channel 5, but it might not have a clue or what is Yonkaz is due to the internet still evolving. I mean, at the time, they were the fourth popular YouTube channel in the United Kingdom, but in terms of American audience, he says they don't even know who these guys are unless they're one of those Minecraft YouTubers. Certain Sega characters of what made it Sega, such as the Chushes and Billy Hatcher, are now gone. 
Heck, you won't even heard the added Fantasy Star character in the game due to Fantasy Star Online 2 being released in 2012, months before the game came out, even if it was a Japan exclusive title at the time. Heck, most of Fire Emblem games were Japan exclusives, and they still have Martha and most of the Smash games released worldwide. I think it goes down by saying that most of the characters from Second Racing are for people that are having that classic Genesis, Saturn, and Dreamcast mindset and energy, while other characters in the sequel, like Football Manager and General Winter, are for those who are into war games or sports games by Sega in their post Dreamcast days. In which it makes you wonder if those guys were even made by the same company at all. And Team Sonic Racing? What up, Sonic Squad? Today we're doing some Sonic Racing. Ready? Okay. Let me show you how it's done. Now, got it. So, I guess that's it for the Sega Superstars games. And I'm kinda disappointed that Sega for abandoning such a beloved crossover series. It did more than what Nintendo did other than just a fighting game. It was a party game, a tennis game, and a series of racing games. Right now, Sega is about to make new entries of our favorite childhood games since the Saturn and Dreamcast days because it's what the fans want. I'm sick and tired of Sega milking off of the Genesis, like they need to remind us that Vintage is new old. I remember the fact that they had done this shit so many times before. And finally, finally, they acknowledged these games from the Saturn and Dreamcast because that's what made those consoles special, even if they didn't last more than 5 years. Not only that, but give us a proper sequel to Race and Transform. It doesn't have to be a racing game, it could be a music game or a fighting game in a similar manner to that of Virtual Fighter. Hey, there's a fake game called Sonic Smackdown, and I enjoyed that game. Well, time will tell when Sega would truly step out of their little box after years of milk and Genesis, Sonics, Yakuza's, Puyo Puyo's, etc. And, like I said before, despite their struggles, I'm still a big fan of Sega, as a kid and as an adult. What the hell is Sega Heroes? Thanks for watching, Inmate! Just a reminder that less than 2% of my viewers has been sticking around with this channel and subscribed to it. If you haven't subscribed yet, feel free to do it. I really appreciate that, and it helps me make more content like this, because it's my passion. Until next time. <laughs>